During the beginning of the 13th century, the Islamic world was facing its hardest times. The bloodthirsty Mongol Empire was making all the world's greatest empires bow down to their oppression. On the other hand, the Khwarazm Empire was at its peak and conquered many areas of Khorasan, Iran, Syria, and Iraq. However, after being invaded by Mongols, the entire empire was torn to pieces. After the destruction of this empire, Turkish tribes there started migrating further towards Iran, Syria, and even Egypt. At the time, the Kai tribe was a warrior tribe, which was a bit stronger and more populated than other tribes. The Kais had left their homeland Khorasan and were headed for Ahlat. However, after the onslaught of the Mongols, the Turkmen had to migrate from the Caucasus and surrounding areas to the east and central Anatolia. The Karakacheli clan of the Kais moved to Arzurum. However, after Arturo's father passed away, the Kai tribe split. Arturo had three brothers, Sungurtukin, Gundodo, and Dundar. His two older brothers, Sungurtukin and Gundodo, decided on taking a large part of the tribe with them to live peacefully in Ahnat. They did not support Arturo's path, and over time they faded away in history. They lived a quiet and unremarkable life. They suffered big losses during a great Mongol invasion, and those who were left alive lived subserviently under Mongol rule. Erdrul had a brave and fearless personality and would walk on a path separate from that of his older brothers. He wanted to have the tribe settle near the Byzantine border, a place with nice fertile land. Settling there would also pave the way for the Seljuks to prosper and expand, so the remainder of the tribe along with Dundar chose Erdrul as their leader, and so Erdrul, with just 400 families, headed towards the west and arrived in the Sivash Tokak region of modern day Turkey. In 1230, Erdrul and his men helped the Sultan of the Anatolian Seljuks, Ala ad-Din Kaykubad, in the Battle of Yasijimen against the Khwarizm Shah. Following the battle, Sultan Ala ad-Din gifted his tribe a hilly area near Ankara, possibly so that the Seljuk borders would be protected from Byzantine attacks. Erdrul Ghazid not only protected the border, but also helped expand it, and so the city of Sut and Damanich and their neighboring territories which he had conquered were then given to him upon the request of the Qais to the Sultan. Not to mention, he had also conquered the Karajaysar castle during this time. Ertuğrul Ghazi and his tribe spent their summers in the Damanic plateaus and their winters in Sut, protecting the northwest border of the Seljuks and ensuring order in the region at the same time. In the meantime, hundreds of thousands of Turkmen who had to migrate due to Mongol pressure first from the Caucasus to the east and central Anatolia and then from central Anatolia to the west invaded the Aegean region and founded Turkmen Ghazi principalities there. The Ghazas spirit was kept alive by various Turkmen principalities who not only fought against Christian warlords in the name of Ghaza, but also settled the Turkmen who were returning to the regions that they had previously conquered. After settling into the region, the Kais, just like much other larger tribes, began conducting Ghaza, meaning holy defensive wars. During that period, besides participating in holy defensive wars, Erdogan Ghazi and his clan also lived in peace with local Byzantine governors, some of whom paid tribute to the Sultan of the Anatolian Seljuks. Under the leadership of Erdogan Ghazi, the Karakacheli clan became more powerful as they acted together with notable commanders in surrounding regions such as Akchakocha, Samsa Chavush, Karatagin, Aykut Alp, and Konur Alp. Erdogan Ghazi followed a peace-centered, cautious policy due to the low population of his tribe during his administration. He also went along very well with the Byzantine governors around him and evaluated their situation and political conditions very well, and kept his tribe and those living under his administration in peace and tranquility. Peace and security were eminent in the lands under his rule. As a result, Ertuğrul was loved and respected by the people living in his lands, including his Christian subjects. The Sanjuk dynasty was still on the verge of decline. On one side, the Mongols had occupied a large area, while on the other, Christian forces had reoccupied many old Byzantine provinces. The border areas were always in a state of war, and there was always a threat of attack from Mongols. To make matters worse, many corrupted Seljuk leaders started establishing their own factions. The current state of the Seljuks was not the best, however, the future was promising, as a great amount of Turkmen began the conquering of western territories and made new homelands for themselves. Ertuğrul's legacy would never be forgotten, who would be named Ghazi for his brilliant successes against the neighboring Byzantine lords, and his son, Osman I, would establish the Ottoman Empire which would go on to last 600 years, the longest a Muslim empire has ever lasted. The last 10 years of his life were spent quietly in his tribe, when due to old age, he transferred all his responsibilities to his youngest son, Osman. A historical artifact we have regarding him are the coins minted by Osman, which identify Ertuğrul as the name of his father. In 1288, 
Ayatollah al-Ghazi passed away at the age of 90. After his death, his tomb became a spiritual destination. The locals in the Karakacheli have visited the tomb every year since then and still continue to hold festivities.